catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com. It's weekend. It's a beautiful Friday afternoon. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I know some of you are like so eager to kickstart your Friday. And of course, I could hear some people saying this is the turn up location. Not to worry. We'll turn up as long as it doesn't rain. Because when it rains, it pours. Hmm? It really pours and it's been pouring since last week, non-stop. Just to give us some hours of break, then continue without like caring about anybody. But welcome to the show today. It's Cruise Control. And on the show, we usually talk about trending topics. And since it's weekend, we do lighter conversation over here. So we can go into the weekend more relaxed. I know some people have been all about work Monday to Friday. So it's time for us to just take some light news news something light you know nothing so serious and looking at how the mode of transportation has been lately i have been on the receiving end and my pocket is already tearing you're about to say oh fuck oh yeah it's tearing my pockets and this is as a result of the fuel subsidy the new president uh raised up and of course who is also suffering this? The users of Bolt and um, Uber. They had a two-day strike. And notwithstanding that the old subsidy thing is happening in Nigeria, Bolt is also facing some protests and allegations and boycotting in Kenya uh, due to the activities of the wicked people. Uh, I would say the wicked people, yes. Uh, kidnappers, fraud stars, and the likes of it. Notwithstanding that both has some safety measures in place, which I talked about late last month, I uh, would we'll definitely be looking at some of those safety measures and seeing what the situation is like. And uh, of course, what else? What else are we looking at? Twitter. Hmm. Elon Musk is just a, a household name over here, always bringing up new features and looking for ways he can monetize the social media platform. Right now, they're restricting people from sending a limited number of DMs to verified users. Uh, so people like you and I, who don't have the blue tick, we cannot chat with people that have blue tick. They are not our mates anymore. We are not in the same class. Mm? That's what they're saying right now. And of course, uh, there's a new uh, data protection policies being signed by the new president all this we'll be talking about shortly this is cruise control and of course this is africa tech radio where we report africa's technological advancement one broadcast at a time or one cruise control at a time just looking at the new bill being signed by the president on data protection law and what this means for the digital economy you know over here everything we have to talk about relates to how it um, impacts you and I and of course looking at the technological landscape how everything is becoming digitized what does this mean so the new president president Bart Bola Ahmed Tunumbo on Wednesday signed the data protection bill into law and uh, this legislation is going to allow the establishment of the Nigerian D Data Protection Commission to replace the Nigerian Data Protection Bureau. So when the Nigerian Data Protection Commission replaces the Nigerian Data Protection Bureau, it's going to affect how things are being operated in the system. So it's just looking now for how it's protecting the data of you and I. I remember having this conversation with my friends around how cybersecurity experts think that there is no place for them in Nigeria. And I say, no, do you know how important data is? I mean, data is king, if you ask me, because with your data, a lot of stuff can be manipulated. With your data, a lot of stuff can be marketed. With your data, a lot of stuff can be actually got to, like, they can have debt incurred on your head just by having your data. 
So data cybersecurity is actually important and having a, a law that binds how we share our data, especially the data of Nigerians is uh, very, very important. So according to the Section 8 of the Act, the power of the Commission include issuing regulations, rules, directories and guardians under the Act, engaging consultants for assistance in the discharge of this function. The President also appointed a new commissioner to oversee this and the commission is expected to protect citizen private information and be independent like i said you and i we are nigerians and we're under this law and everything binding the law needs to be protected so you need to protect the nigerian child you need to protect the nigerian male you need to protect the nigerian female you are a government property in essence <laughs> So the new piece of legislation also has the power to impose penalty and prescribe fees payable by data controllers and data processors in accordance with data processing activities. Also prescribe the manner and frequency of filing and content and of compliance also to return data and of major importance, data that of major importance to the commission. So all of this is what is happening right now. The bill has become the fourth bill that the president has signed into law since assuming uh, his office because this this man is not wasting time he's just doing the work doing the work doing the work and putting those people who were his opposers or opponents to side bench telling them see now let me show you how to run a country and he has been doing uh, some massive massive uh, changes around uh, the economy people are seeing the effects also, I can tell you for free that the electricity has been has become regular for quite some time now, since May 29th. So we've had like a very, very stable electricity. So what does this data protection law, what does it mean for the digital economy? Because uh, when you look at Nigerian digital economy, it's changed significantly over the last few years. We, we already see internet penetration, there's mobile technology ad abduction, and of course the rise of tech startup, massive, massive. The country also looking at how everybody is becoming tech savvy. Almost everybody. My mom, my mom will be calling me, how do you do something 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 the, the recent one she's addicted to right now is watching yoruba movie on youtube she had to call me and she was watching one and her phone probably went off or her internet her data finished and she had to buy some uh internet on her phone and she wants to go back to watching what she was watching before the phone went off so you have to be putting her through now she doesn't want to call me to to ask all of these questions she knows her way around all these things i'm like ah uh -uh, come on sabi moda now you know uh -uh. so people are really becoming tech savvy and it's impressive how everybody's catching on so fast uh, from people who are having tech startup to innovators to people trying to learn or upskill their skill. Uh, this is really good. So digital activities such as e-commerce also, mobile payments and online services have bloomed over the recent years. However, like many other nations, uh, Nigeria also have issues with cybersecurity, which like I was telling my friend, I feel like there's a, there's a very, very uh, green ground for cybersecurity experts. Don't be doubting, Thomas, that there will be no job for you after taking a course or after going through your training or just bringing down yourself, thinking that you're not needed in Nigeria. You're very, very much needed in the country as data protection and data bridges are crucial especially to the government body, they need to protect the data of the government and the data of the people. Not to talk about financial losses. Uh, in recent time, fintechs have been taking attacks from the hackers and invasion of privacy. Like I said, your data is so, so important. If they hack you, that's where you will know that, ah, this life, Okpemeji, there's two. <laughs> there's the real world and there's the virtual world. So a, a hacker can just destabilize your life by just changing things. <laughs> See, don't let them have your time. That's just all I'm going to say. But with the new law, 
I'm sure that sensitive personal information about individuals and firms and of course your financial information will become protected and of course the occurrence and how vulnerable security system is would also be guided. This this whole thing is definitely going to ensure that uh, there's cyber security measures in place and customers or consumers also can actually carry on their e-commerce transaction and feeling safe. Also, the open banking system is another good uh, thing that was put in place in the previous administration. And of course, there's so much that is going to happen with this uh, new data bill, which has been signed by the new president, Bola Ahmed Tunubu. And the, the bill also offers a framework for the protection of people's privacy and personal data, like I've mentioned. And the Data Protection Commission is also in charge of ensuring that personal data about Nigerian is protected protected within its borders and the information shared with its institutions or businesses both public and private how they operate and how they target Nigeria for private and secure base or legitimate interests rather than just everybody have access to people's data also there will be transparency and informed uh, decision making this is going to be one of those things that we can also be sure to get from this bill. Um, that's it for the data protection bill. Once there's a new update on that, I'll do as much as possible my best to bring the information to you. Meanwhile, Uber is currently under fire in Kenya and in Nigeria. Now I'm looking at the plight of the ride alien app users and also the drivers who are using this app for their means of income uh looking at what is happening right now with the fuel subsidy meaning the hike in fuel price uh affecting the mode of transportation for most nigerians and people using this app noticing that the drivers are non-compliant with taking the ride on the app actually they they let you request for your ride accept it and then they call you and start telling you oh let me take this ride offline and i'll take this amount and if you don't agree to what they're saying they go offline and it's quite hard to catch a driver during this time as most people are complaining that the price with which they buy the the fuel uh, it's too much and they're not making so much from using the app as uh, boats usually take a huge percentage. I think 270 or, or a quite high number of percentage from from the rides and they still have to pay commission and there will also be maintenance of the car and all of that stuff. Everyone in the, is in this together. Like I said, everyone is in this. Uh, on Twitter, there are people complaining about this situation, how it's affecting their mode of transportation and the drivers also uh, going on strike. Even the Uber drivers had to join for the strike, which has been going on for the last seven days in reaction to all of the subsidy removal and the hiking fuel price. The, there's a there's a union for these uh, drivers. It's called the Amalgamated Union of App-Based Transportation Workers of Nigeria. Uh, they went on a suspended strike action after five days of boycotting the app of uh, the of Uber and Bolt. The suspension was announced in a letter signed by the General Secretary of the Union. In the letter, the union stated that the suspension of hostility would last for seven days, during which Uber and Boat are expected to meet the drivers and deliberate on their demands. The drivers are asking Uber to increase the fare rates for which they carry the passenger and reduce their commission also, the percentage they have to take per ride. The, pres the national president of the Amalgamated Union of App-Based Transportation Worker of Nigeria, Comrade Damola Adeniro, 
has called off the nationwide strike for a period of seven days during which the app companies are expected to do the needful. The decision was reached based on the promise made by the app companies to look into uh, the demands and also invite the drivers for deliberations in the coming week through the Office of the Register of Trade Unions of the Ministry of Labor in Abuja. So we all understand how it is right now. The reality is this fair subsidy is affecting everybody and there will be an increase in fare uh, for taking rides on the app. But then when uh, they check it again, the, the, the prices have skyrocketed and all of that stuff happening and Uber drivers are still taking a high percentage from these drivers so it's kind of hard to really sum up what they're making or taking back home at the end of the day the math is not matching well like it's not calculating the calculation is just not working for them and what's the point of going out to work for a company the company makes what they with what they are supposed to make on you on the other hand you go home with little to nothing so what are you working for basically that's what this whole union thing strike is all about hopefully they come to a conclusion that works so they're demanding that a 200 percent increase in the fare and that uber and both also slash their commission to 10 percent rather than taking uh, close to i think they're taking close to 40 percent of the ride so right now they want it to be at 10 percent where it works so it's a win-win for everybody but then i'm considering if 200 percent is on my price fare she are not going to trek like this Eh, I want to use my Legacy Benz. So, ah, for those people who don't have cars, you just put your legs on the road and start walking to your destination. Don't worry if you're tired. Drink water, buy buy gala and lacasera on the road or bottle water, and continue your journey because two hundred percent increase. Oh my, I wasn't informed. <laughs> I wasn't informed. Going going over to what's happening in Kenya uh, right now, Kenyans are they are not happy with the ride alien app boats and they are protesting also. They are on the, they are putting these boats on the fire, alleging that the app has currently or recently been used for kidnapping activities. So in Nairobi, there's a trend where people order a ride and when they get into the ride they either they either go missing or their items are being stolen from them or all those crazy stuff i remember it was happening to us in nigeria at some point i think uh 20 majorly 2018 2019 it was rampant that it became very unsafe to take all this app drivers or ride alien drivers online uh you you get into the car you definitely see maybe another driver whose identity is different from the one on uh your phone or the car they are bringing to come pick you up is totally different from the one registered on the phone the plate number is totally different and the driver will be making excuses for something you do not understand then midway some some people report that they were being robbed so I, I i think very few cases of kidnapping but mostly cases of being robbed being attacked all of those stuff happened uh, there was one crazy one i saw where the lady was like she was crying she was oh my goodness i don't even want to think about it and to think i had i almost fell victim to this but i didn't i i, I just had to use my my instinct and my guts because my guts was telling me no 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 this is not right then i told the driver let me snap you and send the picture to my people and he said no he doesn't want his picture to be taken he came in the car was supposed to be a red car he came in a blue car and also it was a blue tinted car but the plate number was the same then i said no something is just not right here let me take your picture and it was late in the night this was like after 11 moving to 12 a.m in the night so all of these things have been reports around the activities of drivers or users of this ride alien app 
boat right now in kenya authorities are alleging that this app has been used for all of this uh, crazy activity that is not supposed to be so it's kind of a, a, a time where people are skeptical about using the e ailing company app for moving about because it's become very unsafe they've even had a time where they they had a battle thing where the the drivers of boats were not allowed to come pick people at the mall because a lot of crazy things were happening and i remember boats putting up safety measures like selfie take a selfie feature where the driver has to snap himself and the the passenger also have to take a selfie and individually upload it then the app they can track the the drive time or the drive location and all of that stuff and if it's not the same person they they do not they flag down the the ride so this is already going on right now there was an issue of a uh, kidnap of a 34 year old Timothy Kirago and uh, 33 year old Samuel Kipuri so these two people connived and they kidnapped Eric Gachoka who is the daughter of a Kenyan media personality so immediately uh, she entered the the ride they assaulted her and kidnapped her but the police were able to trace these two guys uh, that's Timothy and Samuel to where they stay and when they got hold of them they were able to lead to their hideout where they kept the victim so people have been complaining about this it's kind of crazy right now because uh, both Kenya confirmed that the incident in a statement while emphasizing their contribution in helping the, the local authorities bring the transgressors under the law they said they are actively uh, collaborating with the authorities to provide pertinent information regarding this case that supported the conclusion of the investigation the company also cautioned its app users from boarding any cab whose details are contrary to what it is on the app the company claims that this measure being followed can avert a similar occurrence from happening next time so they're discouraging people from using or continuing a ride when the vehicle details is not the same like the one i just mentioned right now it was my situation the, the guy came in a blue camry toyota camry and on the app it was showing a red meanwhile because i was kind of a bit vigilant it's a street where nobody parks outside uh is either you're going into your compound or you're driving by the road and uh, i noticed a red car was parked in front like uh, quite a stretch but i could see long distance and i noticed a, a red car so when i told the guy i don't want to take the ride again he started persuading me this was the guy that wouldn't allow me to take his picture and send to my own people just in case i i just something inside of me was not feeling right about the whole ride so he kept saying don't take my picture though and then i said okay be going i would take my time to order another ride it's rained that night i remember standing outside my compound and the security guy came outside i was like um what's happening i said oh i explained the situation he doesn't want me to take his picture and he has a tinted glass and the car is a blue color it's supposed to be a red color blah 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 and the guy said okay please be going because you cannot be parked in front of the compound and this guy came down from the car and started asking me trying to persuade me to continue the ride and i said don't worry where i'm going is just like a 30 minute drive don't worry i would wait out i'm sure i would get another i would get another ride and immediately the guy was turning to go off the red car was also making a move so i'm like hmm interesting because I was actually looking at the street to see like what's really up. Because why would he come down to start persuading me to come continue the ride? I said I didn't want the ride. Yeah. So these are things that sometimes is really not the app uh, fault. Because you have to be vigilant. You have to your own safety first. Because these all people are only going to release a press statement giving apologies what about if something really bad happens huh 
me i like to take caution for my own self protect my own self before putting it in the hand of any company's head or whatever so that's that's just what's happening right now and in kenya it's been a recent issue where people have been having problems upon problems with the app and uh with the arrest of these two kidnappers right now in kenya uh people took to twitter to narrate their own case and of course both app is someone tweeted and said both app is full of thieves and the app protects these thieves from facing the law my goods were stolen by a rider with both app and till date both refused to share the rider's plate for the police to act despite sharing an ob with them i remember people in nigeria also had similar issues like i said back then in 2018 2019 you would always see people come online to drag this uh app people even not just both though because i keep saying both there are other companies too i think uber also was under this type of pressure where people safety wasn't guarantee and they had to be looking for measures by which they can curtail uh these bad guys from carrying out their bad activities so, so what are some of the safety measures that both has put in place in regards to all of this situation? First, like I said, they demand that you do not continue the ride when the 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 driving driver's detail or the the ride detail is not corresponding with what you have in reality. Like I said, real life and virtual life, they are two different things, but there must be a correlation. Mm? And of course, they demand that the driver upload a selfie of them before hitting the road for a ride and also the passenger has to also take a picture in addition to this measure by the company riders can disclose the status of their live trips with the third party for added safety by sharing live location and also both uh, tracks trip in real time I feel like all of this measure is always in place but then it's only me that can protect myself so once i see that something is not ah always listen to yourself oh that's what i'm going to say always listen to yourself especially this weekend that you're turning up and turning out i remember when i was still on the streets don't say i told you uh, that i was on the streets but uh, so i used to order right at 2 a.m i'll be going from island to mainland when i get home i'll be like god book your board oh huh? you don't know this person in the middle of the night there was a day i told the driver to stop uh by the atm i needed to get money i needed to get some cash i wasn't going to come out the next day and i also needed to pay for the ride which i could pay with my phone but i needed cash so we stopped by the atm to get the money and a guy just crossed the road this was 3 a.m 2 30 something or 2 40 something in the middle of the night crossed the road and said he wanted to get into my ride and i said hello hello i don't understand why would you want me to drive along with you he said "Eh, please let me drop him by the way do i know you have we met before and i told the the driver that i'm not going to enter into that car if the guy is going to enter then it almost resolved into a fight between this guy and the driver so crazy things happen trust me crazy crazy things happen even the drivers are not prepared for it and sometimes the drivers are part of it Mm -hmm. so be careful watch out for yourself before the app watches out for you take safety into your hands oh Elon Musk Elon Musk let me just be sounding like a typical African woman Mm -hmm. this guy has just been looking for ways to stifle users of this twitter platform i especially because i i don't get it it took me almost five to seven years to understand how to use twitter not just because i cannot type what i want to type but engaging with people jumping on thread i remember back there i used to go and beg people can i be your friend <laughs> shameless me yeah i I just didn't understand like i was not getting interactions then later i get to know oh you have to have something meaningful to say and if you're jumping on the conversation better makes sense because see teachers with cane are on standby 
If you say you do not have sense, there's somebody that not have sense times 1,000 that is going to put you straight. Don't worry. <laughs> so people on the street of Twitter are always very careful, very calculated. When I got to know it, I started using it. Then after a while, I just stopped. Because I'm not, I'm, like I said, I'm an introvert. I keep my thoughts in my head. So when Twitter is asking me, what are you thinking? I do not want to share. Because sometimes they are personal. Sometimes they are... People have come to understand there's a spiritual space also where people talk about uh, finding spiritual balance, not like spirit cocoa, that kind of things, like spiritual practices, uh, meditation, life lessons, um, even people helping people on board their traumas. Yes, uh, that's how amazing that app has been. There are coaches, mentors, there are people who just dedicate time to educate people. There are people who look at helping people solve their life uh, issues one tweet at a time or one thread at a time. And right now, all of this is going to be moving towards, okay, what does this have in store for me? What am I getting from this? People usually do these things for free. Uh, seeing how everything has to be paid for on the app, I'm sure people will start looking at ways they, they start monetizing the, the knowledge and education they give out for free. So most times when I think of all of these rules, all of these new policies is making, I just think of the people who come to get refuge on the app. There are so many things I've learned from Twitter. There are so many directions of conversation that I'll be like, hmm, never thought about it in that perception or something. And I'll be like, that's interesting. And I dig deeper to see, okay, who is this person? Uh, is it really as involved as is sounding on this particular conversation? Because there are some people that just want to talk. And there are some people who would leave links to other things or other works they've done. So all of these things now are going to be restricted. I don't know if you get me because I'm sounding frustrated. Eh? It's, it's stressing me out. Right now they're telling me there's a limited number of DM I can send. Some of my guests, I go into their DM to chat them up. So what are you telling me? If I have to be explaining things to my guest and trying to get the, the, the right timing or frame framework that works for the two of us this is going to be an extensive conversation except you're telling me to please link up and get off the app to continue the come ah, i don't even understand i'm thinking again those people that come to beg for money huh those who don't come to beg for money on the app too oh well now people who have the blue tick are definitely the top citizen on the app so you cannot talk to them anyhow you cannot have access to them anyhow uh ilia mox uh recently made this law where twitter is going to restrict people from the number of dm they can send to verified uh users so this verification come with eight dollar per month for the Twitter Blue subscription. Uh, Twitter is reportedly to to impose restriction on the number of the direct message that non-blue users can send each day. They're still working on this future how to restrict the number of DMs. Uh, I'm sure the interface they're working on it. Once it's ready, you'll be banned. Don't talk too much to the top citizen of Twitter users, okay? Don't, don't. So this is expected to prompt users to sign up for the Twitter Blue, the platform subscription service. Uh, they're just looking for ways to stifle you and make you just give up and pay. I feel like Twitter is one place where people have been so reluctant to pay for the, the Blue Tick. People pay for Apple Music, Spotify, Netflix... Uh, Ulu, Amazon Prime, people pay for Fire Stick also, people pay for all of these things and not be worried about the amount they are being charged except when they crack down on the password sharing and people are still paying. I mean, I took the, the, the updates where there's an increase in revenue generated by Netflix. But Twitter has just been going back and forth. We are yet to get an estimation of how much they've made so far since Elon Musk uh, bought the, the platform or the company. As at last two weeks, there was an um, 
article that said that the price has actually dropped in valuation for how much Twitter is worth right now. So how did this uh, restriction of the DM message sharing with the blue subscribers how is it going to affect interaction on twitter like i said people will start looking for ways to monetize their thread or their tweets and uh, this is going to stifle how people interact with each other collaborations happen or partnership because lo- so many collaborations have happened that have shaped the world starting from twitter yes so the implementation of this new restriction on direct messages for non-blue users on Twitter is likely to have a significant implication for the social interaction on the platform. It's going to be limiting the number of DMs that non-subscribers can send. Uh, The platform is essentially creating a divide between those who have uh, the blue Twitter and those who are not the lower citizen, like I said. So with the limited number of DMs for non-subscribers might hinder the ability to engage in direct conversation and outreach. And of course, for users who have uh, who heavily rely on DMs for networking, collaboration, or even personal communication, this restriction could be frustrating. I mean, it's going to impede organic interaction and hinder the discovery of new connections and conversation. Basically what I'm telling you guys this is going to cause a whole lot of hold up (laughs) i don't know how to to go about it i don't feel good about this news i'm taking because you want to make money you're restricting how people come together do you know how many people have collaborated from different ends of the world Hmm? so many and now you're creating a, a space where they have to pay for coming together See, if you can pay for blue Twitter, go and pay. If you can't pay, just just be watching. Let's let's be seeing where this is going. I'm sure Jack has something up his sleeve. Guys, I remember seeing a post from him. He's working on something and I trust him. Jack is my guy. This particular conversation interests me so much because it's AI and of course it's generative AI. And looking at how... You know, it's weekend. We love to have new clothes. We never have enough. When someone invites me out now, my first problem would be, oh, I don't have what to wear. So right now, if I go online to order the clothing or the shoe, I don't know if it's going to be my perfect fit. I'm I'm just not sure about it. But generative AI is coming into play in that aspect. Google, who is ever you got to lean into generative ai is launching a new shopping feature that shows clothes on the lineup of real life fashion models um i remember was it next to primark one of those big fashion shopping store actually had this avatar also digital um, ai stuff where it scans your body size body shape and you just kind of scans it and puts it on the the viewing screen and you can see how the cloth fits you uh if you have like a full power everything is going to show to let you know if that cloth is going to be perfect on you i know you really can't feel uh the tightness or anything but you definitely see the overstretch and you will see if it's um folding your 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 skin all of those stuff so it's really good and now google is actually releasing this um shopping feature that would allow for uh fashion models to show you what the clothes looks like in real life a part of wide range of updates to google shopping rolling out in the coming week will be the google virtual try on tool for apparel take an image of clothing and attempt to predict how it will drop fold cling stretch and form wrinkles and shadows on a set of real models in different poses i'm just thinking looking at it and seeing how it's changing because when you when you shop online you definitely see uh the platforms upload models that are wearing uh the similar outfits um or the product you want to acquire and it's almost the same thing so if AI is giving me this, does it mean that AI is going to go across all board to look for size, skin color, height, 
you know our body mass is always different no matter how we look the same we we'll definitely still feel different somehow our shape i don't know i don't know how to feel about this one so the virtual try on is powered by a new diffusion uh base model google develops internally diffusion models which include the text to art generator stable diffusion and dal e2 it learns to gradually subtract noise from a starting image made entirely of noise moving it closer step by step to a target so it brings it closer the the interesting part is just like i have some i'm not so so done with this new feature because I've, or maybe because i've seen a feature i think that was last year and right now google is taking up this new feature for people who are shopping online i like the fact that the tool is very handy like i don't need to go to the store to to try to get the avatar just while i'm checking i can just drag my google tool on the page and see what it's going to look like i think for me that's that's a good one yes that's a very very good one. i would applaud them for that um initiative i like it but then when i think about it like how would they really know my size will i have to be scanning through series of ai generated models oh i beg we'll get time for that one so people are complaining or wondering like would he be them how would it look like them everybody wants representation you know what i mean now everybody wants to feel like okay this brown is actually looking out for me in particular not getting something that looks close to me but isn't me i remember a meme the lady went to the store uh a shopping mall and she entered the store where they were selling clothing items and it was a fat model but the model doesn't have fupa doesn't have the folding tummy and she went in and rolled some pieces of clothing and threw it inside the front of the the trouser the the mannequin was wearing i'm like go girl yes because when you tell me this clothes is for big size uh people and the big size you're showing me has a flat tummy maybe she has gone to have a tummy talk or she was made like that with all universe generosity or the good genes from her parents she was able to maintain the body or she was able to get into fitness some people are not blessed that way some people don't have the time to look fit that way so how inclusive is what they're they're tendering to us to 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 take i mean if you want me to use the generative uh, is the person as tall as i am uh does person have coily short hair because i do have coily short hair so if i'll be trying a product like a cap my head is small when i go to make my wigs the the lady at the salon usually complain that she has to go look for the extra extra small caps to make my wig and when she doesn't find it she has to like attach so many elastic band to be able to hold my, the cap on my head to have it in place so imagine i have to buy a wig how would you know my problem hmm? how would you know so i feel like so many of these things are good in the fact that they want to help us but some of the life issues you really have no idea and generative ai have no idea on that case i'm going to be bouncing out of the studio but cruise control continues there is more for us to do on the show today it's friday don't go anywhere it's africa tech radio and my name is buki thanks for listening and don't forget to catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com